Okay, so um, personal characteristics of effective group leaders. The thing that's good to me about a Thursday lecture is Monday lecture, we're like, what? I mean, there's just so much information coming. And so we're talking about some principles and concepts that you may or may not have already really, really understood. But then Tuesday and Wednesday, so by Thursday morning, it's I now have something to say about that. I'm, I've experienced that. I get what you're saying. Without me even going to the next slide, just throw out some terms. Tell me what you think about characteristics, effective characteristics of group leaders. Active listening. Active listening. Not good if they play with us. Probably not. <laughs> Active listening. Anything else? Observant. Observant. Open Empathy. Open-minded. Able, Able to communicate well. Confident. Confident. Flexible. Flexible. Guiding. Guiding. Be able to guide the group. Patient. Patient. Exactly. Not being afraid to enter the risk or the danger if it is some. Okay, let me see why this is now not working, which always happens. Might I need to push this? So it just died, which is, of course, something that happens with technology, and we will try to get it. Oh, I don't want you to have to put up this. Okay. So just the next one, please. So characteristics of any leader. Um, there's some things that may fit in that category that might not necessarily be good with a group leader, but just some generalities. They're honest. That should be transferable. Um, invested, engaged, communicative, I think someone already said. Um, driven, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how we conceptualize that term. Um, progressive. <laughs> so <laughs> when we look at characteristics of a leader, there's something specific that we're looking for for characteristics of a effective group leader. Okay, here's one of my pictures again. So I, I love kind of just putting up the gurus in the field so we'll know who they are. So Carl Rogers stated that warmth, caring, genuineness, acceptance, and respect form the basis for the core therapeutic personal characteristic. Those are some terms that I actually heard when we were giving feedback to the leaders particularly the one with warmth. I can even see the person that we were talking about with that concept. Um, caring, genuine, except everything that we said. Those of you, and I'm thinking about half of us, if you could just raise your hand, let me know who's already led. Wow. And now who hasn't? Okay, are you scared? Don't be scared. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so in anticipation, you have had the opportunity Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to watch. Does that make you more confident, um, feel safer, or even more anxious? Those who have not led. More confident. Okay. Yeah. I've seen this. I've observed, I've been watching, and I feel that I can I can do this. I can it's been modeled well. Okay. Anyone else? I think like knowing your group members too, like you kind of know what works for them and what doesn't based mm -hmm. on what's mm -hmm. happened in the past few days. So that really gives you a good gauge for like how you're going to be interacting and mm -hmm. the questions work well with them. Okay. So already knowing the group, um, and just kind of watching the dynamic. So when we talk about even the concept of linking, it's not just linking themes that we see within group, but from even day to day, person to person, to be able to create that cohesiveness that can carry itself throughout the group. Um, anyone else? So those that have already led, what advice would you give those 
whose turn is coming up. Relax. Be authentic. Be authentic. <clears throat> That's so much easier. When I show up as me, I don't have to remember the script. I just act out of who I am. Yes, ma'am. Don't be afraid of the silence. <clears throat> don't be afraid of the silence. Because there could be so much happening in that space and to be comfortable with that ambiguity, which is one of the characteristics that we're talking about. Yes. Ensure that there is safety. What does that look like to you, Nikki? Um, okay. Okay. So make an eye contact with everybody in the room, even you know, right from the beginning, and then you know, it's just there in your presence. Mm -hmm. You know, you say you know, another. I told you yesterday. Express what you're supposed to be in the room. It's just the way it is. So you can almost see everybody else, you know, their shoulders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being reassured, you're safe in this space. I got you. And the group responded to that, knowing I am safe in this space just because of someone verbalizing and demonstrating it. Okay. In addition to the therapeutic inner self, um, self is developed through characteristics of empathy. I think we said that wisdom, creativity, um, maintaining satisfying relationships, and meaning and purpose for life. Let me just kind of pull out that creativity piece. I think we did see it, and a couple of us just kind of shared using that empty chair um, technique. Either the chair is empty or someone fills the chair. But being able to know, I can be creative in this space. I can ask if you were a car, what kind would you be? I spent all last night thinking, what's a 1964 or the other night? A 1964, um, 64 and a half Mustang. I thought 64 and a half Mustang. What, what is that? But either just to be able to say I'm classic, I need to be taken care of, or I'm powerful. I gain value with time. So those sort of things, being able to be creative. Because group can be. Sometimes anticlimactic, and you might want to um, appropriately interject something to shift and bring energy back into the group. So being okay with being, being creative, um, knowing even as we talked about yesterday, um, to make sure that it's appropriately creative. We may not want to do an exercise, number one, that you do not have time to finish, that you cannot process through. Even when we did the, um, the psychodrama yesterday, the reason for the time Dr. Joy picked very specifically to be able to have time to process through it. Because some people doing it in the moment, it was, oh, okay, good. But then why did that hit me later when I went to lunch or something to be able to have a space to process it? So creativity, making sure you're mindful of when to incorporate those activities. So the um, immediate task of, of the group is therapeutic alliance with each group member. Tell me what you think when you hear that, therapeutic alliance with each group member. Trust. Trust. And it's not just about here individually. It's now caring for the group. And that's one of the themes that we talked about that those that I was able to observe did so amazingly. Um, and that was... In individual, you get to do this. It just gets to be you and I. I get to care for you, make sure everything is okay here. But in group, the group is the client. So now you're making sure to just kind of scan. Um, did anyone have any problems just resting in, being able to scan? Was it awkward? Um, please. Exactly. <laughs> it really does. But that's a great look. Lindsay did. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that's really good just mm -hmm. to repeat it so if any of us up here didn't hear it. Um, that it can initially start off being awkward. If you think that you're doing kind of this scan like that, they can look kind of scary. But knowing that when the top, when someone's speaking in the group, typically the group is looking at that person. So it frees up the leader to now be able to scan and the group not looking at them wondering, why aren't you paying attention or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit of a co a co leader to be able to sh to switch off those roles. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So you don't necessarily sometimes you're able to see the person in the And that's a great point. If you have people here flanking you to say, do I turn and just kind of look to see what's going on with them? When we talk about scanning the group, um, just that's literally what we're talking about, being able to see how's everything going, how's everyone doing, how's everyone responding. It doesn't have to be a long, determined gaze. What are you thinking? That kind of thing. But it's just to kind of feel the atmosphere. So even here, if um, something is missed, even to know that your group members may if something is happening in, in a view that you can't really see, that your group members may then, you'll see, because I'm scanning that they're looking here. And now that may prompt me, is everything okay over here? Because their attention is there. And that's trusting trusting the group. Yes, sir. Okay, so the observers on the outside could see things that the group leader inside may or may not have seen, and then they're evaluating that. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're okay. So you're just talking about the feedback that's been given about scanning, and there is no formula necessarily for that. Again, it's just making sure that you are tracking what's happening in your group. Yes, sir. <laughs> but I agree with you um, both, even in the concept of what scanning is about. Again, it's not this prolonged stare to try to ascertain what are you thinking, how are you feeling. Now, this is just the safety, what's going on in the group to make sure that you're present, not as an individual session, but as a group. So, um, establish safety. I think we've already talked about that and promote trust. So those are things that, unless anyone has any questions about that. Um, personal characteristics of effective group leaders, number one, we have been talking about this and it continues to show up. Um, ability to maintain your own anxiety. So that's something that group leaders absolutely know what that has been like. Can someone that has either gone or anticipating going, share about this. 
ability to maintain your own anxiety. Nikki. Like it doesn't when it does. And and yes, thank you so much for that. And when we talk about maintaining your own anxiety, not that this big thing will always happen necessarily. I have to share this story. I was telling Dr. Joy this. So I was doing a group of court-ordered adolescent, um, <laughs> it's already funny, um, <laughs> court-ordered adolescent um, gangbangers, right? So I'm in Colorado and they were, why they do this, I'm not really sure, but they were court-ordered and they were all court-ordered from different gangs to the same group. Nice. Yeah. So people come in and they're already posturing. They're nervous. They're trying to figure out, am I safe in this space? So um, the first group, the first group, I walk in and, and we're all trying to do introductions. And I see one of the gentlemen, he takes out a, like a jagged edge switchblade. And he's turning it in and out. And my heart literally beat out of my chest. I'm not kidding. I I could not breathe but I walk up to him and everyone knew at that time that I was from well they may not have known at that point so I said um really I'm from Baltimore and I leave my gun in the car and you bring a knife to class and he looked at me of course I didn't have a gun in the car but I'm like what do I say (laughs) so I said you bring a knife and I walk up to him and I said give it here now, what manifested was probably calm and cool, what was happening internally for the whole class. So he gives it to me, and I put it in my pocket, and I just kept going and, and talking. I was reprimanded later because you're not supposed to walk up to someone that has a weapon. I should have just made sure everyone would say, well, I didn't know that. And you don't think, think about that when this oh God, is happening. You to walk up to me with a weapon. I was, try- I was most certainly mindful of the group. And because I didn't know who was in there, um, in terms of why did he posture like that? And so the whole group, my anxiety on a scale from one to 10, with 10 being the highest, was a 10. And I had um, this. No, you don't put gang members in the gang. I know, that was lesson number one, right? To mix these, these members. But in the sense of just being able to maintain my own anxiety, being in that space. Um, And I think some of it, when we talk about some of the things that have happened here this week, no one bought a weapon, so thank you for that. Um, (laughs) None of that really, really broke out. But there's some things that happened, like you said, Nikki, that most certainly affected us individually. And because the responsibility of the group leader is to care for the group, we have to have capacity to take what's happening in the group, hold on to our stuff. And like Dr. Joy keeps saying, find out individual counseling. Um, I use this term all the time. It's kind of like floating a balloon. I'm not going to detach it from me. I know it's here. I'll come back and get it later. That's nothing for me to write down a note to say, oh, something happened to me with this. And I probably want to go and work that out with my individual counselor. Um, You said for the group not to feel guilty but also not to shift the focus, particularly if they're going somewhere, to make sure they can go where they are going and not have to care for you as the group leader. Um, Ability to tolerate ambiguity. How many of you that have already um, led a group have seen things shifted and you weren't anticipating it to go that way and you you had to just be comfortable in that space? Yeah, even doing the empty chair yesterday that was not scripted, (laughs) not a part of the group. So the leaders are sitting here trying to go with what's happening in the here and now and in the moment. But I'm sure that was, what do I do with this and how do I process that? So being able um, to uh, tolerate that. Awareness of privilege. Actually, part of what we were talking earlier today with this 
you know, I really want, I, I want some people to go deeper or where are they at or any of that. This is part of that. So it's part of what's going on for, for all of us, by the way, we all are Catholic students. And so part of what's going on with potentially with us might be that I'm sitting there going, I don't know what's going to happen. Will they go there? Won't they go there? And it's that, I, I, I have to stick with that. Because you don't know, right? You don't know. So anyway, when you said that, I thought mm -hmm. about, I wonder if that is what might be going on mm -hmm. as well. Anyone else have anything to share about being able um, to tolerate the ambiguity before we go to prayer? Okay. Um, awareness of personal defense strategy. So when we are in group, we're still humans. We don't lay down our humanity and then say, now I'm a group member and nothing in my life is real for this moment. That's not what happens. So we have to be able to compartmentalize that. Um, but know how we respond if there is something happening that may be personally triggering us. So know yourself to say, this is how I respond when I dot, dot, dot. Anxiety has an expression. So, or fear has an expression or discomfort has an expression. And even if it may be blind to you, those are the things you really want to try and get feedback um, to say, what did I do when, when you said that? Someone said something funny. Um, um, they, someone just said, how are you doing? You have this look. And the person said, this is my face. <laughs> this is just what I look like. But it was interesting. I wondered, what is that that they're seeing? That she's like, I don't know. What am I doing? This is just my face. I just look like this. I'm not doing anything particular. Um, but to even get feedback on that, to say, what was it that caused you to ask me what was going on? Was there, did I look pensive? Was I, whatever. So I thought it was kind of funny. Um, willingness to take risk. We already know that. So there's times, even when we did the psychodrama yesterday, I was wondering, because some of the questions were, and we learned this in 505, close ended. Did you like that? No. Okay. Did you like that? Yes. Okay, so we only had three questions to be able to say, what am I really, really thinking? What was it like for you to do that? Well, that's different than the closing the question, and it gets the person to go deeper. So we get to do that in group as well. We see a theme. We've already linked that this is something common that's happened, childhood issues or whatever, rupture and repair. When we think about relationships, they're rupture and repair, rupture and repair. And so when we're doing a theme, maybe around relationships that have been ruptured, and we're talking about repairing, do you want to repair? No. Do you want to repair? Yes. What would that cost you if you repair? That's a different question, but it's risky because of what the response may be, but it's also helping you to go deeper into some other things. Next slide. Um, Self-awareness in the moment to say, you may want me to be something different than I am right now or do something different, but I'm very aware that I am contemplative or I am um, frustrated. I'm whatever. I know me, even if externally, you may not know kind of what's going on. So group is not for us to be, you know, pretending. I think a common theme, we were talking about transparency, genuineness, um, and this is kind of, this is who I am. So if this is who I am, I'm okay with that because I'm very aware that I am engaged just because I didn't cry. Um, I am, something is happening in me. And I think as a group leader, you can say, I see you looking a little different and something may be happening with you. Is that something you would like to process? Can we go anywhere? And you then can say, yep, yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you. Now, if there's some resistance in that, the group leader can say, mm, you know, but once you've known the person, um, and even when we talk about group focus, let me just kind of take a sidetrack. Um, group focus. When do you know you've been somewhere too long? So that's when you have to shift the focus. And you can easily do that um, if it's time by saying something as simple as, has anyone else experienced a similar thing that we're talking about over here? So thank you so much for sharing that. 
can anyone else relate? Can any, so we're shifting because we can tell the energy in the room. The energy is like, okay, you know, and we want to be sensitive to that. But at the same time, we don't want to shift too soon because we want to be there in the here and now to help this individual that's part of the group have a space to, to do their processing. So the dance that the group leader is doing is to know, should I go, should I not? But it's easier once you've been, number one, connected to your group and you're tracking, you're looking to see, this is where we need to go, we need to stop, we need to go back here or something. Does that make sense? Um, clear boundaries. So <laughs> we're not gonna push people to do what they, we will encourage <laughs> and prompt, well, Tell me about your marriage because you're, you know, those kind of things to be able to know what's appropriate for the group. Even when we talk about um, group leader self-disclosure to know is what is this about? Um, I love that um, that acronym that someone gave weight, W-A-I-T. Um, why am I talking? So when we're in this group space to be able to say it's OK for me not to participate for me not to say anything right now because it's better for the group that I'm I just kind of disappear and don't say anything and allow the process so um faith in the process I think this is probably my favorite um but faith in the process of group and the goodness of God even though we will do potentially groups that are um not in a faith-based organization, those of us that have expressed this is our um, frame of reference, our worldview, we still bring that to wherever we are. And so because I believe that, I believe that he knows the plans that he has for each and every one of us. And even in the process to say, I heard some say, I didn't get to say what I wanted to, oh, I was concerned, I'm sorry. I was concerned that other people didn't get to say what they needed to say. Trust the process. Someone in one of the groups came back and said on Wednesday, I wanted to finish processing something that happened to me on Monday. Because the process was they needed their time to either to just look at that, to, to sit with it, to understand it, to be comfortable. Now I'm ready. I feel safe. I'm coming back into the group. And I want to now do this thing because I feel like it's time for me. When we really go through those stages of group, as you've been reading about in your gladding tech, when we've normed and formed and, and now we are really a working group, we won't have to, most times, um, prod to say, let's do some work. Let's, it's going to happen. People are going to come in and say, I'm still not finished from yesterday or the day before. And we're not usually doing one-time groups. I mean, we can, but when we're talking about a, any sort of group, they're long-term. It's going to go from week to week. So people are going to come back after having process. Um, we talk, when someone mentioned that, I was thinking about um, some trauma groups that I've done using EMDR. So that's, does everyone know what EMDR is? Yeah. So eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. It's real common to do an EMDR session and then the person goes home and continually, continually process it. Um, not only is it common, it's expected and desired. So then when they come back and when we start talking about, last week you said this is what you saw yourself. I'm a good person. Um, and how true that is. Well, now that you've processed that during the week, where are you with that? So I think when we look at the process of group to say we can start something on Monday and we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But for the most part, we started something group one week. We're doing it next week. Um, and I trust the process that while people are not with me as the group leader, that they're still processing. I, I think it's no different than individual counseling. And I tell my clients this, I draw a power, uh, what do you call it, a pie chart. And I do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 168 hours a week. And I put a little sliver in the pie chart and I say, you're with me one day. You're with me 
this one time. The chances of things happening in these other 167 hours, whatever it is, is more likely than something necessarily happening here. I think the beauty with group, particularly when we get to a working phase, is that so much is going to happen in the time that you're together with your group. But it does not mean that there's nothing happening those other hundred and however many hours. So, questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, particularly for those of you that will be doing groups today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. So thinking about this list that was before, and we may have to toggle back and forth, but it's okay. Um, from the list above, which do you excel in and which would you like to develop more? So let's go back. Um, ability to manage your own anxiety, ability to tolerate ambiguity, awareness of personal defense strategies, willingness to take risks, self-awareness in the moment, clear boundaries, faith in the process. <clears throat> If you can go to the top. Um, um, so from that list, which do you excel in? So what I want to do is what we already talked about, I think, pair share, where you just kind of think about you for a minute. So let's, I'll give you a time frame. But think about what do I do well? Am I, am I self-aware? But if you're not self-aware, you probably won't know that. But um, <laughs> am I comfortable with ambiguity or whatever? And then you're going to pair with someone. So, and it doesn't have to be one or two. It can be three. And it can be three. And however you want to do it, and you can turn around. Um, and then share with that person which one you do well at and which one you really would like to grow. In. So let's think about it for just a second. And can we go back to that? So does everyone know how you really rock it and something that you really want to work on? You got it? Okay. So we're also going to add just a little bit of art um, therapy play kind of with this, with some Play-Doh. I think it's so important when we're working. Okay, so you can hear the artistic people. They're like, yes, Play-Doh, crayons, coloring or something. So we can even... Um, What's the term? <clears throat> Conceptualize whatever we want with the Play-Doh. So now let's just kind of partner. So do a pair and then share with each other kind of where you are in that. And we'll pass out the Play-Doh. We have a color request. <laughs>
Now that you have that, what you're going to do is based upon those characteristics that we looked at or one that you think of that you know you're really great at, um, try to conceptualize that. And I'm having a hard time getting this out in um, sculpting form in your Play-Doh. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. And whatever that looks like to you is what we're talking about. <laughs> We have okay, some yeah. some attachments with the Play-Doh already. Can I take this with me? Um, no, sorry. <laughs> we'll be turning this back in, but yeah, I understand, right? Okay, enjoy. We're just going to play some music while you 
process through your skull, and then I'll come around to each of you, see how you're doing. If we have any questions.
Okay, so another couple minutes. How's it going? What do you have that? Okay, thank you so much, first of all, for totally throwing yourself into the activity. Um, I've asked a couple of people to share um, just kind of what they have, and you can either come up here or just share however you want to do it. Okay. Okay, however you want to do that. Um, so I created an arrow um, to kind of define my strength. Um, I think that this week has really taught me that um, that the process, like I can have faith in the process, because like um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I think that our group had a little bit more of a struggle getting into really like opening up and sharing, whereas other groups were more, you know, ready ready to do that. Um, but you know, as the week has gone on, we've we've developed that process, and it's just really giving me faith in the process. So yeah. Um, I made this handheld mirror, and this is to signify my faith in me for you helping me. Because I just thought about like looking at myself in the mirror and being aware of like what I'm feeling in the moment, and whether or not it's helping me or helping others. Really looking to see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a mirror to identify self-awareness, an arrow to identify. Strengthen the process. Yes, ma'am. Um, she has a story over here. <laughs> I do. Um, well, I, this is supposed to be in my vlog because um, yesterday kind of made me realize that we went to a lot yesterday. You know, it was like really hot for me to keep it together, but I did. So this vlog is going to be kind of like my reflection on how I felt like this week just because of like the two weeks of COVID stuff. And, um, what I would like to develop more is, this is kind of um, my fourth, no, this is kind of like, <laughs> this is kind of like me jumping off the porch, because I would like to, um, I would like to develop more in like taking risks, because I um, didn't like really like feel as confident as I can be this year, so um, I would like to get in there to see what I can do in this process. Very nice. So the porch was where you were, yes. and then taking risk, jumping off the porch, or walking, however. Okay. <laughs> Would you share? Just me and a little chair. Um, when I was in the hospital, we had to have a mover, and I had to move my foot to my mouth so I could breathe in and out. So, you, I mean, and you created the whole chair, the person sitting in the chair, to demonstrate your ability to attend. To, I know, right? <laughs> Artistic. <laughs> and, Jake, you had a whole process. Would you like to or you don't have to? Um, sure. Um,
<laughs> Very creative. So it started off as one thing, but still symbolizing risk. You moved into the very creative. Does anyone that I didn't ask would like to share or process kind of growth? Please. <laughs> Thank you. So let's just reframe that. And I mean, we say weakness a lot, but area of growth. So yeah, because in some areas, it most certainly is your your heart is your strength. You're saying in the group capacity. So, oh please, um, I just had to make a emoji face. Okay. <laughs> like a laughing, smiling emoji. Um, I think one of my strengths, and it could maybe be a uh, area of growth. Oh, area of growth. Sometimes uh, it's communication. Okay. I'm trying to just know when it's appropriate right. to interject. Okay. Can we see that emoji? That was one of the icebreaker questions yesterday. Yeah. If you were an emoji, which one would you be? And so everybody pulled out their phones and say, "What? What emoji is that? What are, they have names?" Yeah. So yeah. I mean, like it's kind of. It's the cheesers. smiley face. It's just like the big cheeser. The big cheeser face. So, thank you so much, all of you, for really engaging um, the process and the opportunity to be able to understand yourself a little better. It is 11:30. Before you. And before we go, then Dr. Joy has some. Actually, before you like totally mush yours, before you mush it, did you mush it already? Yes. Oh, oh, I did it. I did it. Okay. Well, for those who still have theirs unmushed, please let somebody know what you made, like next to you. And actually, some people didn't want to make some. Yeah, so I'm looking. <laughs> um, but I'm curious, how was that like? <laughs>